Thank you very much once again for providing us the opportunity to present our research on this esteemed conference. Uh, I, on behalf of my colleagues, would like to apologize for not being there with you because of some last minute commitments. However, we do look forward to seeing you all next year, hopefully. Ladies and gentlemen, the topic of our research is motivating employees intrinsically, a quantitative study in light of intangible rewards. Uh, along myself, Umar Khalid Bhatti, I have two more of my associates who have really supported us in terms of carrying out this research, Professor Ibrahim Sani Murth and Ms. Sarish Sadeh. Without any further ado, I would like to go to the topic and that is that business organizations across the globe are constantly weighing to attain sustainable competitive advantage over each other. Leaders and managers in the field assert that human capital is one of the key resources for successful realization of organizational goals. A motivated workforce is considered a prerequisite for attaining successful outcomes, increased productivity and improved organizational efficiency. Ladies and gentlemen, motivation being a significant construct is generally referred to as the desire to do things and is mainly divided into two categories, extrinsic and intrinsic. Both types are of utmost significance and value. Intrinsic motivation plays an important role in shaping the output and performance of employees. It is believed that intrinsically motivated employees in general show greater commitment, devotion and loyalty to the organization. However, contemporary studies do argue that keeping employees intrinsically motivated is a big challenge. Therefore, it has gained popularity as a phenomenon for academicians and practitioners to investigate and understand the phenomena further. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as you are fully aware that there are there are a number of theories for motivation such as Maslow hierarchy of needs, ERG theory, acquired needs theory, equity theory and so forth. Interestingly, Herzberg two-factor theory is widely applied and acknowledged. Now in this theory, Herzberg identifies intrinsic and extrinsic factors like achievement, recognition, the work itself, responsibility, advancement and growth which have a significant effect on employee motivation. Interestingly, the use of tangible rewards alone seems insufficient in achieving the required motivation at work. In line with the above argument, Rahim and Dao, in one of their very uh, seminal works, they argue that tangible or extrinsic rewards are not the sole consideration of, for employees and that in fact intangible rewards are also of considerable importance to them. Therefore, it is imperative for researchers to study this phenomena further for greater insight. So as I was saying that it is imperative for researchers to study this phenomena further for greater insight into the matter. Now the same work of Rahim and Daud has also been endorsed by other researchers as they found that intrinsic motivation needs more research, especially in context of Pakistan. It has been identified that business organizations here need to improve job commitment and instigate intrinsic motivation among their employees. So ladies and gentlemen, this present study attempts to examine the impact of intangible rewards on intrinsic motivation. In the next few minutes, I would like to cover a little bit of literature review in order to clarify some of the basics for the constructs that are under the study. As you are all aware of the fact that the term motivation has been derived from the Latin word mover, which means the desire to move or achieve. Of the various motivational theories presented over the years, this is the same, as I have stated earlier, the most prominent theories studied and applied in general are Maslow's hierarchy of need, Herzberg two-factor theory, ERG theory, and all these theories, or you could say the ERG theory, which explains the determinants and dimensions of motivation, Researchers and psychologists generally approve all these motivational theories, yet Herzberg two-factor theory in particular is discussed and referred to very extensively by academicians and practitioners if we look at the literature. Ladies and gentlemen, Herzberg proposed that there are certain factors that may contribute to job satisfaction while others may not. In addition, some determinants may act as a source of dissatisfaction. 
In general, these factors are categorized as motivators in a hygiene factors, which I will be discussing and highlighting in the next slide. Now, interestingly, motivating or motivator factors encourage an individual as they find themselves fulfilled within the task or job they perform. Likewise, hygiene factors may not imbue any motivational value when present, but may possibly have a demotivational value if absent. Often these factors may be extrinsic to work itself. The same theory has been acknowledged for the present study due to its relevance to the stated research objective. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the overall representation of hygiene factors and motivators for your current reference. Likewise, motivation at work can be divided into two categories, intrinsic and extrinsic. When we talk about intrinsic motivation, it is referred as an activity undertaken for its inherent satisfaction rather than for some separable consequence. When intrinsically motivated, a person is moved to act for the fun or challenge entailed rather than because of external product pressure or reward. Extrinsic motivation is generally seen as a physical or a tangible, for instance, pay, bonuses, incentives, and so forth. What is more to be noted is that intrinsic motivation results from innate psychological needs of an individual like recognition, competency, and self-sufficiency. Past studies do advocate that rewards impact an individual approach towards performing his best as well as influencing his overall level of motivation. Research shows that the boundaries of extrinsic reinforcement have directed researchers towards the development of new approaches to motivate people. This approach has reinforced the view that intrinsic motivation can enhance a person's drive to perform more productively and that rewards offered directly affect intrinsic motivation. Ladies and gentlemen, a number of researchers derive intrinsic motivation as a single construct. However, some theorists have proposed that intrinsic motivation can be classified into sub-constructs as I have stated in the slide, like intrinsic motivation to know, intrinsic motivation to achieve things, intrinsic motivation to explain stimulation. And to keep employees satisfied and motivated, it is exceedingly essential for CEOs, directors and managers to reward them for their performance. Rewards may be either tangible or intangible as I have highlighted before. Tangible rewards are concrete, visible and easily measurable such as financial remuneration and promotions. Intangible rewards on the other hand may not be overtly measurable and may often come from other actors in the social environment such as co-workers and the leaders. This can further be explained and be clarified by looking at this table for your kind reference. If you see we have the tangible rewards and the intangible rewards that can clarify the overall idea. Now based on these assumptions and arguments, this study tested the following hypothesis. Ladies and gentlemen, this research is quantitative in nature and examines the relationship between the predictor intangible rewards and the criterion intrinsic motivation. This study uses second order structure equation modeling to evaluate and analyze the hypothesis. The primary data were collected from 319 employees from the service and manufacturing sector of Pakistan through self-administered questionnaires. Ladies and gentlemen, a total of 1,100 questionnaires were distributed all over Pakistan and 575 were received out of which 319 were found usable and were utilized for calculating the results. Please note that intrinsic motivation scale was adopted from November 1997 Whereas, uh, as you can see from the slide, it is very obvious that they do showcase a very strong combat alpha value. Similarly, the intrinsic reward was adopted from Luxo's 2012. And by looking at the table, you can see that the constructs and their dimensions, for instance, like intrinsic motivation to know, intrinsic motivation towards accomplishment, intrinsic motivation to experience stimulation, intrinsic rewards all show very strong combat alpha values. Similarly, for the same study, mean standard deviation and correlation values are right in front. That can again clarify the overall, the overall strength of the constructs. 
Ladies and gentlemen, discriminant and conversion validity for all constructs were examined and factors for all items to an actual construct with a statistical significance were assessed by applying confirmatory factor analysis. Notably, conversion validity was tested by composite reliability as you can see, composite reliability coefficient CR as you can see in the PowerPoint slide and average variance extracted which is AVE. Now if we look at the basics by looking or consulting higher bind and climb, the values of CR should be greater than 0 0.70 for the AVE, the values must be greater than 0 0.5. For CR, I would like to repeat, it should be greater than 0 0.70 and AVE, the values must be greater than 0 0.5. Likewise, to assure that the constructs are unique in catching a specific phenomenon, discriminant validity was assessed through maximum shared variance, MSV, as you can see in this slide, and the average shared variance, ASV. Importantly, the standardized values for the factor loadings were greater than 0 0.5 and less than equal to 0 0.8 and had p value less than equal to 0 0.05 respectively. The final values met all the required thresholds and confirmed conversion and discriminant validity for the constructs under the study. Moving further, the measurement model of the current study was evaluated on the basis of fitness measures that is chi, chi square, non chi square, root mean square error of approximation which is also known as RMSEA, the abbreviation and comparative fit index which is CFI. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can see that all these values basically meet the required threshold as again referred by Bind, Klein and Hard. However, due to the shortage of time and knowing that I, was I had to present everything in 15 minutes, I would directly like to go to the adequacy of intrinsic motivation structural model, the second order. I have skipped the first order over here in order to save time. However, I can discuss it later during the question answer session if you have any. So if you look at the second order here, you can see that uh, this particular uh, model basically fulfills all the requirements and all the thresholds that are there. So the chi-square value, the degree of freedom, p-value, and norm chi-square, CFI, RMSA value all meet the actual threshold. And most importantly, yes, we do see that there is a positive relationship between IR and IM. So ladies and gentlemen, in the end, based on the results, it is evident that intangible rewards clearly increase the intrinsic motivation of employees. And most importantly, if I may like, if you may provide me the opportunity, I would like to add that organizations are well advised to make use of intangible rewards such as recognition, achievement and responsibility to motivate their employees intrinsically. Why? Because they can reap greater rewards from the efficient, motivated workforce because they are more satisfied and loyal to the organization. It may also be implied that business organizations should employ intangible rewards to fulfill the psychological needs of employees to intrinsically motivate them. As organizations diversify and there is a deeper ap appreciation of the different psychological needs and want of the workforce, the manager may explore a range of intangible rewards. These could include public appreciation, a sound work environment, use of friendly speech, denoting affection and care, behavior that suits their organization culture the most. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you once again for providing us the opportunity to discuss our research with you. Please note that this is an ongoing research. It would actually lead to a larger study which we will hopefully discuss in the coming months. However, we would really appreciate that if there are any questions or any queries or any recommendations, please feel free to email me on the following email address. I would like to thank you once again for providing us the opportunity and I apologize for not being there physically. Thank you very much and have a very nice conference. Bless you.